648, your top stories this Friday morning in your Sunrise Smart Start. A new plan to keep juvenile suspects from becoming repeat offenders, we're told, would require a change to state law. So far this year, Monroe County has seen more than 2,000 stolen cars. Of the 112 juveniles arrested in the cases, 30 are repeat offenders. Executive Adam Bello explains building a new juvenile detention center would give agencies a new place to take repeat offenders. He says at the facility, these teens can be brought in, receive proper counseling and treatment, all while making it mandatory even for parents to be involved. But Bellow and authorities argue this would require some changes to current state bail laws to give agencies and judges more power to issue those requirements. What we're asking for is the ability to mandate that you go to this other office so that you can sit down and get figure out what is the circumstance. What happened that led this kid to commit this crime in the first place? What services does the family need? What does the kid need? So we have that announcement, but no timeline on when or if this new facility would be built. But Bello hopes to get the plan up and running as soon as possible with the help of some state funding. The young man shot and killed earlier this week on Laser Street in a stolen car has been identified as Jihad Snow, an 18-year-old. RPD arrived on scene Tuesday morning. Officers found the victim still alive in the wrecked car. He died later at the hospital. No arrests have been made. If you have any leads that can help solve that case, please call 911. A jury has convicted a sex offender of murdering a 65-year-old woman last year in Rochester. Prosecutors say 54-year-old Ronald Lagasse brutally beat Mary Simser to death, violated her, and left her body in an alley off Pierce Street. She was found September 24th. Lagasse was convicted of rape in 1997, making him a level 3 sex offender. In a landmark ruling, the U.S. Supreme Court decided Harvard University and the University of North Carolina violated the Constitution by considering race when deciding whether to admit someone to school. The ruling over returns nearly 50 years of precedent with affirmative action and means higher education institutions need to find other new ways to create diverse student bodies. Polling from CBS News shows 70% of Americans do think race should not be allowed as a factor in admissions at college. Nazareth University President Beth Paul responded to the ruling from the high court saying, yes, court decisions are complex and she's not sure exactly how this will affect admissions going forward at NAS, but she says regardless of the ruling, they will continue seeking to establish equity and access for all students, faculty and staff. Also responding, the governor, Kathy Hochul, expressing her disappointment over the decision. She was asked about it during a press conference. This is a dark day for democracy and for equality. And to make the presumption that today, in 2023, that our country is colorblind is incorrect. That is not the norm for people in America today. More reaction, top of the hour on CBS Mornings. For now, a quick trek of some of your headlines in your forecast with James Gilbert. Yeah, air quality still a little bit of an issue out there, but otherwise I think a lot of people trying to get out, play a round of golf. I think today should be great outside of a shower here and there. Uh, most of the rain should be confined till late this evening. Tomorrow, Sunday, I put that in yellow though. Still playable, but there will be storms here and there. As you see, that rain chance bumps up. And Monday looks actually pretty good outside of an isolated shower or two. We'll take a look at that. The, the um, Independence Day forecast as well uh, coming up at the end of the show. Brennan? See you in a few minutes. Thank you, James. State and local leaders are still telling people to be cautious, stay alert, as the air quality is still an issue from the fires in Canada. There is a statewide air quality advisory running through at least today. Monroe County also canceled movies in the park at Innovative Field downtown last night. We heard from the health commissioner, Dr. Mike Mendoza, who's emphasizing the importance of staying inside during these conditions if you need to and wearing a mask if you want, especially when you're looking at the more at risk population. The reality is that different parts of a region will experience this in very different ways. To so to you know to imagine a countywide policy is hard for me right now because you know everybody's different. We all have different circumstances. We all have different you know ability to tolerate or not tolerate you know certain levels of risk. And we will keep you updated here, of course, each morning, News 8 at sunrise. You can also get the forecast check as well as the AQI, the Air Quality Index, on our website, along with updates on cancellations or postponements for any events heading into the 4th at rochesterfirst.com. Sunrise traffic, 653 out on the east side. Crash just reported at Shelford Road between Harwick Road and Empire Boulevard, close to 590. If you're on 590, 490, 390 around town, uh, getting ready to head out, 
that way as part of your commute or your holiday trip looking good so far. In an effort to cut down on delays for holiday travel, all temporary lane closures on state roads and bridges, that construction will be put on hold starting tomorrow through Wednesday. They do this anytime we approach a busy holiday. East School Superintendent Dr. Sean Nelms is credited with leading a remarkable turnaround at a city school once slated for closure. And when the U of R partnered with the city school district and the State Department of Education eight years ago, East was failing its students with a 29% graduation rate. Today, Nelms tells us that rate is 86%. In March, he announced he would be stepping down at the end of the school year. Monday, he moves on to start his new role at the U of R as VP of Community Partnerships. Where does that leave East, though, and those students? Nelms says they're in good hands. If this school continues to keep the main thing the main thing, I think they'll be okay. And I know that Principal Blocker and the team that she surrounded herself with um, will be um, more than capable of, of enhancing the work that we've done here. Stay with us in our shows later tonight on News 8. Hear more of our anchor Teresa Marsenberg's interview with Nelms. He explains why he feels now is the time for him to leave East and how he plans to bring what he calls the secret sauce, his plan that helped East succeed as well as other struggling schools, uh, what he wants to do for them here and around the country. Strong Museum is cutting the ribbon on its 90,000 square foot expansion. That is the new home of the World Video Game Hall of Fame. It'll serve as a new entrance for the museum featuring a larger than life video game character set. The Strong will open to the public with the new expansion to check it out this afternoon mm. at one o'clock. Also what they're doing whenever you come in part of the new entrance, a ton of butterflies oh, really? with all this. So uh, of course they've had the butterfly garden there. Right. Uh, but yes, very cool. And not just for kids, as we said, <laughs> uh, it's an adult playground too right. the to video go explore games. the video games. Yeah. Really expanded there. Great to see that. And yep. a good indoor activity. We usually say for the winter time. Yeah. But if you're concerned about air quality, uh, that could be an option for you. As we still have that AQI, that index uh, that's over 150, putting us in that unhealthy range. Numbers this afternoon getting into the mid 80s. We are honestly back into the 80s. So I've rest the eight-day forecast. All right, and getting into the fourth, and because the way it falls this year, everyone's got a long, long break. Yeah, please take my be day off. Yes, please be safe. Enjoy it. We'll see you back here in 30 minutes with more updates. Have a great weekend. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.